And when you read on, <laughs> you will discover where the king ordered that all these people should be killed. And it was then Daniel quickly went for prayer meeting. Amen. You see where in verse 17 Daniel went to his house and made the thing known to Ananiah, Mishael, and Azariah, his companions. That they would desire masses of the Lord of heaven concerning this secret that Daniel, his fellow, should not perish with the rest of the wise men of Babylon. So, as they prayed, God revealed the secret to Daniel. Praise God. Go to verse 24. Therefore Daniel went unto Antioch, whom the king has ordained to destroy the wise men of Babylon. Bring me before the king and I will show unto the king the interpretation. Amen. Then Ariok brought in Daniel, that's verse 25, before the king in haste. That's the man that was supposed to kill all of them. And said unto him, I have found a man of the captives of Judah. Hmm, that's the tribe of Christ. That we make known unto the king the interpretation. The king answered and said to Daniel, whose name was Beshasha, Are thou able to make known unto me the dream which I have seen and the interpretation thereof? He will give the dream of the king, then he will tell the interpretation. And Daniel answered in the presence of the king and said, The secret which the king has demanded cannot the wise men, the astrologers, the, the magicians, the soothsayers show unto the king. Your experts are no match. But there is a God in heaven that revealed secrets and make known unto the king Nebuchadnezzar what shall be when? In the latter days. That's the end time. Listen to me carefully, brethren. God, he knows the end from the beginning. So what is happening in the world now is not an embarrassment to him. You know, this should give us confidence <laughs> as children of God. It's only... Bible is the only book where you can find this kind of thing in the whole world. You don't find it in any other religious book. That God Almighty, thousands and thousands of years before, has given the history of human government, human reign on the earth. And now everything will end. And now God will get the glory. And what he will do with the redeemed? I thought you would put your hands together for the almighty God. He showed the king the last days. The latter time is the last days. Brethren, as you study the scriptures and you look at this scripture very carefully, you will discover that we are in the last days of the last days. And that the rapture of Christ is imminent. 
You know the way Peter put it, he said one day is 1,000 years. 1,000 years is one day. So Jesus died about how many, how many years ago? About 2,000 years ago. Do you know how it looked to God? It's like two days. It's as if Jesus died yesterday. The blood is still fresh. That's how the death of Jesus is in the heart of the Father. Like my son died yesterday. So he's talking here about the latter days, the end time. And brethren, from this scripture, you will discover that this, this very scripture, we are just in these last days that the Bible is talking about. In fact, not just the last days, the last days of the last days. So God revealed to the king the end time, which is our own time. Verse 28. Thy dream and the visions of thy head upon thy head are these. <laughs> You know, I see Daniel as a picture of the church. Church that is ministering to the world. Can you see the impact of one man that is correct with God? The influence of a man. God closed all the mouth of all the astrologers. All the necromancers. God made a year of them. And he was dealing with his servant, Daniel, with revelation, not just mere information. Revelation is what makes the church superior to all this year that is going on. The experts cannot solve the problem of the world until Jesus comes, the King of glory. Look at verse 29. As for thee, now he now told him the dream. This is the dream that you had. As for thee, O king, thy thoughts came into thy mind upon thy bed. What shall come to pass hereafter? You see, the vision is what will happen right from the time of Nebuchadnezzar, Babylonian Empire, to the end of human government when the gentiles gentile empires that rule the world what will happen from the time of of nebuchadnezzar the thought was in his heart he wanted to know and god was giving him an answer to this thing god gave him the desire to want to know and then he answered the question <laughs> And it that revealed secrets, that's verse 29, make it known to thee what shall come to pass. I want you to notice something about people that God uses. They don't take God's place. Did you notice that in the life of uh, Daniel? In verse 28, he said, There is a God in heaven. There is a God in heaven that revealed secrets and make it known to Nebuchadnezzar what shall be in the latter days. He didn't say, I am the prophet. And as a prophet, I'm going to tell you now, uh -uh. the glory does not belong to us. It's not about us, it's about God. It's about Christ. You will see here that a genuine servant of God will not put himself forward. First is God. And look at what he says in verse 30. But as for me, this secret is not revealed to me for any wisdom that I have. More than any other living. This is wonderful. More than any living, but for their sakes. that shall make known the interpretation to the king, and that thou mightest know the thoughts of thy heart. 
Look at the heart of a man God uses. He said, it's not because I am better. In fact, God is not revealing the secret because of me. He's revealing the secret because he loves you. You know, when God heals people under our ministry and people, multitude of people are saved, you normally think it's because of your fasting. In fact, when you pray and cripples begin to, to walk and the lame begin to walk and the blind begin to see, God is doing it because of the people. Sometimes you just preach a very dry sermon and you see multitudes coming to Christ and you say, ah, what have I said? God is doing that because of the people. Somebody was asking me, he said, why is it that eh, a minister, so-called minister, we know that they are not right with God. They have problems in their relationship with God. But when they pray, miracles happen. I say, God does miracles, not because of, of them, but he does miracles because of his son Jesus. And he does miracles because of the sake of those people he wants to attract to himself. That's why Samson could be doing all that he was doing, and miracle was still following Brothers and sisters, we must never, never forget that although we have the nature of Christ, we are not deity. There is a tendency to say, ah, we are like Christ, we are like Christ. And then you see yourself also as deity. You can never, never become God. God is still God. But we become one with him through the cross. Never present yourself as God to be worshipped. Daniel was always standing back. He said, not me. Oh. In fact, this revelation was given not because I'm wiser. He will find God using us. Don't think it's because you are smart or because you are learned. No. As I'm here, there is nothing that makes me better than you. No. It's just grace and calling. If I understand anything, it's because of people. It's not because of me. So there is nothing to brag about. What a wonderful man of God Daniel was. Verse 31. Thou, O king, swears, behold, a great image. This great image, whose brightness was excellent, stood before thee. And the form thereof was terrible. And then he tells us, what is up? Please show me the picture. You will see here a picture of what Daniel saw. I mean, what Nebuchadnezzar saw. Telling us what will happen from the time of Babylonian Empire hereafter, as we have heard, to the end of the world, the end of human government on the, in the world. You have the head of gold, then the chest and the two arms of silver. Then when you go down, you come to, after silver, you come to the bronze, which is the waste, made of bronze. And then you have, you come to the third one, where you have the iron. The image was made of iron. And then at the end, you have the ten toes. 
That is the revelation. When you read it from verse 32, it said the image head was of fine gold. Its breast and two arms, that's in verse 32, of silver. The belly and the thighs was made of brass. Its legs of iron. Then when you come to the feet, it's made of clay, part of iron and part of clay. Those are the ten toes here. The ten toes. Then he said, you see, as you are watching this image, look at verse 34. That swear still that a stone was cut out without hands. Hallelujah. Which smote the image upon his feet that were of clay, iron and clay, and break them to pieces. This is where the stone hit the leg. Right at the ten toes. Not on the two legs, but the toes. The toes were made of clay and iron. Part of iron, part of clay. The stone just came and smote it. Look at verse 35. Then was the iron, the clay, the brass, the silver, the gold, that's human system, broken to pieces, hallelujah, together, and became like the chaff of the summer threshing floor. And the wind did what? Carry them away that no place was found for them. And the stone that smote the image became a great mountain and filled the whole earth. Put your hands together for the Lord Jesus. Thank you for listening to our telecast. But are you really sure you are ready for the second coming of Christ? If not, and you do not want to partake of the terrible judgment and the great suffering that will come upon those that are left behind, you need to give your heart to the Lord Jesus Christ and become one of his ambassadors. If you are willing to do so, I want you to say this prayer after me as you put your hand upon your chest. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for your great love for me. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for dying on the cross of Calvary for my sins so that I can receive forgiveness in my heart. I open the door of my heart to you today. I receive you as my Lord and Savior. And I pray that you will save my soul and you will help me to follow you to the end of my life. Thank you, Father, for doing so. Thank you because I am now your child. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name, I pray. Amen and amen. That was New Testament Voice, a telecast outreach of the New Testament Christian Mission International. In case you've just said this prayer of faith, congratulations. You are welcome to God's family. We would like to help you to lay a proper foundation in this new life. Our headquarters address is New Testament Christian Mission International, Salvation Street, off Stadium Road, Ilorin. Our weekly activities are as follows. Systematic Bible study on Wednesday, 
by 6 p.m. Healing service on Friday by 6 p.m. And Sunday worship by 9 a.m. We also want to invite you to our discipleship program called the New Life in Christ School every Sunday by 5 p.m. Please tune to this very station next week, same time, for another powerful package. Remain blessed in the Lord. To the